Hey kids, welcome back to our kids Bible study. We're talking about making choices and making the right choice versus making the wrong choice. But think about the word love. We love candy, we love chocolate, we love ice cream, we love our cats and our dogs, we love our parents. But is love a feeling or is love a choice? Love, we're going to talk about, is a choice that we make time and time again. Our parents make the choice to love us. Even when we're bad and we may do something wrong and our parents get really angry at us sometimes, they may not feel very loving at the moment, but they still make the choice to love us and to do what's best for us. God wants us to choose to love Him just in the same way. We may not always feel like worshiping God or praying, but we always have the choice to love Him and to follow His Word. That's our life point today. Our point says people can choose to show love for Jesus and God. We always have that choice to either love and follow God or to disobey and turn away from Him. Let's read our Bible verse and see what that says for us to do. Our Bible verse comes from the book of Deuteronomy. And our Bible verse says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. So our Bible verse, it's saying that we shouldn't just love God with a part of us. We should love God with every bit of us. With our whole mind and with who we are and our being and with everything we do, everything we should do should be focused on loving God. Showing love to people can be really easy, right? We can give hugs and kisses, we can send text messages, or we can write notes, or we can even just tell somebody we love them. But is it that easy to show love to God? We can't walk up to Him and give Him a big hug. We can't call Him on the phone like I did this afternoon and talk to my parents and told them I love them. We can't send God a text message. So how do we show love to God? That's what we're going to be talking about in our lesson today. And so before we jump into our lesson, let's pray and let's check in with our Mooseberry kids. Remember last week, the game master tricked them into being mean to Alex, and so she didn't really feel loved. And so we're going to check in with them and see how Alex responds to that. Does she make the right choice? But first, let's pray. God, we love you. Please teach us to show our love for you and for Jesus. Help us love you with all our hearts and souls and strength. Please give us opportunities to share your love with others so they can choose to love you too. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome to the Get Out Game. I guess we're playing this Get Out Game where we have to answer silly riddles or something to win. The Game Master, whose identity is like a secret, doesn't like us or whatever, so he made the game impossible, so everything is boring. And Ollie is in first place, and I'm in last, because he took revenge on me, so everything is terrible. And I think this Dash Smashing Kid might just be working for the Game Master, so everything is suspicious. And the Game Master's famous, I know this because I totally recognize his voice, which means everything is awesome. Welcome to the Get Out Game, where nobody gets out. I don't care how smart you are, you're stuck in here. The Get Out Game. Here's the current game board or whatever, if anyone cares. I've got to win. It feels like everyone is coming after me. We are coming after Ollie. It's in Ollie's nature to win at virtually everything he plays. Nothing is more important to him. It doesn't really matter to me, but it matters to him, so yeah, I want him to lose. Ollie did say some really mean things to me to advance in the game. I don't think Alex belongs in a superior academy. I don't think she fits in, and I don't think she ever 
I will. But I, I won't hold it against him. I just wish we were having more fun. Hello, players. Another riddle for you. Whoever answers first can take any spot on the board. You can even trade places with anyone else. You're going down, Ollie. Here's your question. What's my favorite food? Macaroni and cheese with little bits of hot dog cut up in it. That is incorrect. Aww. Anyone else want to guess? Wait, you said whoever answers first can take any spot. You didn't say the answer had to be correct. Yes, I did. Whoever answers first can take any spot on the board. You can even trade places with anyone else. Fine, take your technicality. Just so everyone knows, you never would have guessed that my favorite food is peanut butter and sour cream chips sandwiches. <gasps> wow, I've read about someone else who loves peanut butter and sour cream chips sandwiches. It's a famous person tormenting us. I'm sure of it. Hmm. I wonder what Dash Smashem's favorite food is. I'm partial to chocolate-covered pizza burgers. Thanks for asking, Jasper. Congratulations, Ollie. I'm certain you'd like to advance to the winner's room. I choose... I choose... to switch place with Alex. What's happening? I think it was wrong to take the lead by taking revenge on you. I know God didn't like that. Wow, Ollie. I know how much winning means to you. Being willing to give up something you love in honor of God is awesome. It shows that you love him. I want to be like that. I want to make choices that show I love Jesus more than anything else. Sorry about the mean stuff I said about you before. I think you are exceptional and you do belong at Mooseberry. I hope the rest of the game can be fun for you, Alex. Not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Way to go, Ollie. He made the right choice to show love to Alex. Even though he messed up and was mean to her in the first place, he made up for it by sacrificing himself and making the choice to do an action that showed love. Look at this gift right here. This gift is in a bag. It's a pretty cool bag, right? This is one of Reuben's gift bags that he got for when he was at, on his birthday. But guess what's inside? Inside is some of my favorite footwear, flip-flops. I love flip-flops. They're so comfortable. You can just slip them on and go wherever you want to. And then your toes are free. They're not locked into your shoes. You don't have to wear socks with them. Flip-flops are the best. But flip-flops also remind me of our story today. And in our story today, we're going to be talking about how a special gift in feet showed love to Jesus. We're talking about when Je a time when Jesus and his disciples were in Bethany. And in Bethany was some of Jesus' best friends where they lived. And those friends were Lazarus and Martha and Mary. Lazarus, remember, he's the one that died, and then Jesus brought back to life after three days. Well, this time, Jesus was at their house, and Martha was cooking dinner, and she was serving everybody. So she was serving Jesus, she was serving his disciples, and Lazarus was sitting at the table. And you know what? Mary wasn't even helping her. Let's check in, and let's read our Bible story and see what Mary was doing. And so while Lazarus was eating dinner with Jesus and his disciples, and Martha was busy running around cooking and serving the meal, Mary took a pound of perfume, pure and expensive nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped his feet with her hair. So the house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. And so Mary, Mar Mary took all of the perfume, and it was a lot of perfume. A pound of perfume is a lot that's a lot more than your mom has in the, kitchen, in the bathroom sitting on the counter. And she broke the jar and poured it over Jesus' feet. And then she took her hair and she wiped Jesus' feet with it, spreading the perfume all over the place. Because you see, Jesus wore sandals everywhere he went. 
And he walked miles up and down the road for hours and days just to get to Bethany where they lived. And so his feet were really, really dirty. And even when they washed it, Jesus' feet still had a lot of dirt on it. And he may have even stepped in some donkey poop or something. And so Mary took that perfume and she wiped Jesus' feet to make them smell better and to anoint his feet. Anointing means just pouring oil on someone to show that they are set apart and special. Well, when Mary did that, one of Jesus' disciples named Judas, he saw what happened and he was not happy. Remember, Judas is the one that's going to betray Jesus later and turn him over to the Pharisees. And Judas said, why wasn't this perfume sold for the 300 denarii and given to the poor? He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of the money back and would steal part of what was put in. Jesus answered Judas and said, Leave her alone. She has kept it for the day of my burial. For you will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Jesus took the time and he said, What Mary is doing is a special thing. She's taken something very precious and very expensive, and she has done it to bless me and show that I am special and I'm set apart by God to do a mighty and good work. And it doesn't matter, Judas, why you think about it. What matters is that her heart was showing love to me by the choice that she made. So she may not be doing everything that everybody else is doing, but she's loving me in a way that only she can do. Jesus proved his love for people by the things he did. Remember when Jesus was on earth? He took time and he welcomed the children and he, he ignored the adults in the crowd. He said, these are special people. He loved on other people by feeding them when they were hungry. And he healed people that were sick. There was one time where he was at a wedding and they ran out of the drink that they were drinking. And so Jesus made more out of the water. Jesus loved people by taking care of them. But he didn't just love them by all of those things. Jesus showed his love for us in the really greatest way by dying on the cross for our sins. Because putting yourself at a risk and sacrificing yourself really shows love in a way that no one else normally does. So just like Ollie sacrificed winning the game so that Alex would have a better chance at winning, he showed love to Alex by sacrificing himself, just like Jesus did on the cross. But by it's not just like how Alex is going to win the game. Jesus, by sacrificing himself, doesn't let us win a game. It lets us have eternal life with God in heaven. And that's what it means to come in relationship with him, is to accept that relationship so we can live forever with God in heaven. So how can you show love to God? We can pray. We can worship. We can serve other people and do good things for them. But then also we can tell other people about how Jesus died on the cross for them. And that's just what missionaries do every day on the mission field. So let's pray and let's thank God for, the, for loving us and help us to remember to show love to Him. And then after that, let's check in with some missionaries and see how they're loving other people. God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son Jesus. Thank you for the many ways you show your love for us. Please help us prove our love for you by obeying your commands. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. William and Nancy Potter first got to Southeast Asia, they were excited to start telling people about Jesus Christ. But they soon found out that many people were too sick or in need to hear the good news they had to share. They realized they had to meet the needs of the people first so they would be ready to hear the gospel. So when we started looking at these human needs and, and issues that we were seeing and started dealing with that and loving our neighbor, providing clean water, um, providing medical care, doing groups around critical needs, felt needs in community, all of a sudden people were like, there's the Jesus people and they care. Jesus people care, not only about hurting bodies, but hurting hearts. The Potters want Southeast Asians to hear about Jesus 
because he heals hearts and promises those who believe in him forever life in heaven, for there is no sickness and there are no needs. In this particular village, there were only two believers uh, when our work started here. And today, there's well over 100 believers. So it's changed a lot here in this community. Now we're seeing similar things happen in distant communities because these believers now are going out to reach new villages. One of the best ways to share the gospel is with words. The potters realized they needed to help people in need so they would be able to hear their words. Now the people hearing and choosing to believe in Jesus are using what they learned from the potters to share with others. Believing in Jesus, no matter where you live, means getting to be a part of sharing Him with those in need and those who need to hear about Him. Praying and giving to global missions are ways we can be a part of the potters' work in Southeast Asia. Pray God will work out ways for the potters to get into new communities to tell people about His Son, Jesus Christ. They don't just open up and say, hey, come on in, tell them all about Jesus. It doesn't work that way. We have to fight very hard to push in the gospel. And so the only way to go about doing that is acts of love, is prayer, and is sharing, sharing the word with them. Missionaries all over the world are doing stuff just like the potters. They're going and telling people about Jesus, but in order to get people to, l to listen and really trust what they're saying, they're taking the time to love and to care for the people and their physical needs. Just like the potters, they made sure that people had clean water to drink and they took care of their physical needs and made sure they had medical treatment for when they were sick. That showed love to the people. And they said, these aren't just people coming in and then leaving after they tell us whatever important news they've got. These are people that really do love and care for us. And because they love and care for us, we can really listen to hear what they have to say. And so just like the potters are doing that in Southeast Asia, there's people in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in South America, and in Honduras, and Cuba, and right here in America that are doing the exact same thing. They're taking time to love and care for people, to get to know them and to meet their needs so that not only can they meet their needs, but they have the opportunity to share the good news about how Jesus died on the cross for them. It's not just something that missionaries can do all over the world, but me and you can do it right here in Dublin, Georgia. The people that we come in contact with, our neighbors and our friends, the people at the grocery store, or the people that we just run into around town, we can take the time to get to know them and to care for them and love them by serving them. And by doing that, it's gonna open doors for us to be able to share about Jesus. Because everywhere we go, we should show people that we love them and just like the potters had to learn, they get the opportunity to t tell people with their words about how he died on the cross for them. Let's pray for our missionaries and then we'll wrap up. God, Thank you for sending the potters to do your work in Southeast Asia. Please help the potters as they continue to meet people's needs and give them many opportunities to share about Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Kids, thank you for tuning in again to our kids' Bible study. This is our third week of being able to gather as a church on our property, and we're all in different buildings, but I am so excited to see your faces each Sunday. It's not going to be much longer, hopefully, before we can be back up in our kids' worship and we'll be able to get to play games and worship God and learn from His Word about how we can love Him. But until then, like we do every week, we'll be right here because this is another way that we can show love to God is by taking time away from playing and time away from watching movies and study about Him. Kids, Take some time this week and pray and worship God and let him know that you love him and you want to make the choice to follow him. Bye, guys. See you next week.